we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Land Academy Show. Entertaining Land Investment Talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from the beautiful, scenic uh, land of M22. Wow. Boy, wasn't that pretty? We did a lot of M22 the other day. I'll explain it in a second. Okay. Today is Jack Thursday, and I'm talking. I'm going to talk to you about how it, it is now the fourth quarter, and you have to make some decisions about how you want the rest of your financial year to go. Sounds like a football moment. Yeah. Okay. There's a, a road called M22, Mich- the you know State Road Michigan 22, and it goes around. If uh, Michigan were a mitten, it goes around this finger right here, your pinky finger, around here, through. But there's a big Traverse Bay here. And Jill and I drove it. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up in Michigan, southeastern Michigan. I never knew this stuff was up here. Beautiful. What an amazing drive. Yes, we have seen the dunes. Yes, we had lunch in Fishtown. Uh, yes, we thought we should buy something here. Only because as we're rolling through, it's like <laughs> 75 degrees. We hit like, you know, as as Jack calls it, a chamber of commerce worthy yeah. day. That's, that's the day that we did M22. Yeah. Not... January M22. <laughs> so, yeah. January M22, you would do on a snowmobile. Yeah. <laughs> now, that would be fun, too, actually. <laughs> I did see the snowmobile signs as we're rolling around. Oh, just What's gorgeous. cool is that somebody in cor- it took the concept of M22, the sign, yeah. the road sign, and now they have all these products with M22 on it. They have... Um, a directory of go things to go do. People buy dry suits, and actually, while it's snowing, literally, uh, surf. Mm-hmm. The surfs that on certain points on the on the M22. There's great surfing. So, and they also have little local bars every uh, or in restaurants all over the place. So, I just thought that was just brilliant, brilliant mm-hmm. marketing to take some kind of little local secret and just get it out there. Mm-hmm. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community is free. Please don't uh, forget to subscribe on the Land Academy YouTube channel and uh, comment on the shows you like. Not joking. It'd be great because cool. it helps us develop better content when I know what you like. Totally. Stephen wrote. This is lengthy. Okay. Hello, everyone. I've been out of the loop on here and have a lot to catch up on. I'm sure he's talking about Discord. There's always a ton of gold in these chats. Yeah. I usually pop in here when I have questions about my business, so I ghost whenever things are going smoothly. <laughs> That's just like the typical Land totally, Academy member. Yeah. You guys, uh, oh, wait a second, I just closed the deal. Right. <laughs> Discord is where I find out about all the questions I don't even know I need to ask. So here's a question I do have, though. Last year around this time, I sent out a lot of mail and set the closing date just before and after Thanksgiving. I had a decent response, but getting any through through escrow after Thanksgiving was ridiculously slow. Surely it's because of the lack of staff at Thailand Escrow, coupled with all the people still trying to 1031, take losses, etc. before the new year. I still need to do $40,000 to make my goal for 2022. I love it. Me too. Uh, I know I need to get the mail out in a big way, but what other strategies can I employ to dodge the holiday season lag and still come in over target? So one of the people, one of our uh, members wrote in here, and I know you're going to help. Um, thanks for including this reply. Greg answered and said, Hey, Stephen, I've had some ridiculously slow closings through title companies in the last six months, but recently I've had a couple closings go extremely fast within a week on both the buy and the sell side. I don't know if it makes a difference, but a few things I did differently were one, put in a closing day on the purchase agreement and make sure to bring it to the title company's attention when opening escrow to make sure they no, you need to close by a certain day. Two, as Barb A. mentioned, try to find a title company with an in-house attorney, which seems to save a ton of time. And three, closing with a real estate attorney instead of a title company. All great things and all things that we've talked about. I'm so glad you guys are doing this. Um, mm-hmm. They seem to be able to resolve quicker issues 
um, resolve issues quicker, and my last couple of closes were also much cheaper yep. than my experience on closing with title companies. I could have just got lucky on the last couple, but they definitely won't slow the process any longer. I agree with all, all of that. All things that we have found and in the past, too. We've talked about all this stuff over the years yeah. and implement it in our own business. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's nothing more to add. <laughs> no, there's, there is nothing more to add. Perfect. And uh, all the comments that I have are, are actually the topic of this episode. Great. Today's Jack Thursday. And I'm going to talk about fourth quarter decision making. This is why you're listening. So every year, every month... I look at our financial statements and I see where we are from a tax standpoint. I just run basic calculations uh, and I'm very obsessive about it and pretty much always have been. Why? I'll tell you a story. About four, maybe six years ago, I walked into Jill's office and she was sitting on the floor crying, literally. Yes. And it was because I told her how much in taxes we have to pay. And I had to write the checks. Mm -hmm. She was sitting there with a checkbook in her lap crying, literally. It was a great year for us, uh, a great financial year. And, and honestly, we've had many or the years subsequent to that, without exception, have been better. But our tax mi liability was managed uh, much, much better. Largely because I don't like to see Jill crying in a puddle. Thanks. <laughs> Don't make me write those checks. <laughs> so I took uh, my financial responsibility, in, you know, which is my role in this partnership, uh, a lot more seriously since then. And so I, every month, do a, fin a detailed financial statement about all the stuff that we own, how much property we own, what we purchased, which companies we purchased it in, and on and on and on. And I run like a little trial if, we, if today was, you know, December 31st, this is the taxes that we would owe. Is that okay? And the answer is almost always no. So what do I do about it? I wait till October so that we have three months. How do I know about all this stuff? Because I've done this wrong so many times. I wait till October and then I start to say, okay, we've uh, made this amount of money. They have a theoretical taxable income of X which would calculate to this us paying this much money, what are we going to do? Are we going to incur more uh, expenses? And by the way, this is not, we're not doing anything illegal at all. We're not it's doing anything smart. Un just unethical. We're just planning like we would plan to have a child or, or send somebody to school. How are we going to pay for it? Well, well, you just said it's, the main point for me is it's you said doing it in October. The point here is do it in October, not December 20th. Then there's nothing you can do about exactly. it. Exactly. Your liability is going to be your liability. It's done. So but we can have, choose mm -hmm. we can choose to incur ordinary and necessary expenses like let's say new new equipment. Uh, we can hire some more people. We have three months to mm -hmm. full three months to implement whatever we decide. Maybe we want, to, we want to launch or start down the path of launching a new company like Offers to Owners or neighbor, uh, Parcel Fact or whatever else that we're, we're planning on next year. And we can incur some of the expenses now that we would incur anyway in January, February, and March. But now we move like it up. Just like balance it out, right? Yeah. Just even it out a little bit more. Uh, in the land business, there's a lot of... Uh, opportunity, especially if you're cash basis, uh, financial statements versus accrual opportunity to buy some additional land. Uh, there's also opportunity for us to say, I look at the closings that Jill has scheduled and I say, look, is there any way we can not close this deal uh, in December like you guys have this in November or December? Can you please check with escrow and please check with the the person who's buying it and or, or selling it or buying it, whatever we have on the buy side or the sell side and push it back to January, whichever is in our benefit. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things are normal things that business, uh, that real estate professionals have been doing for many, 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 many years, forever, since as long as we've been paying uh, real estate taxes. And there's, there's uh, very specific, in most cases, rules and regulations that you need to stay in within the boundaries of those rules and regulations to file your taxes. Mm -hmm. You just have to do it. You have to plan for it. And uh, you need to, if you don't have an accountant, finding an accountant in April when you're ready to file your tax returns is a really bad idea. True. Finding one in October, super good idea. True. They're not filing taxes. They're not thinking about it yet. They're just, you know, having planning meetings with people like me. Yeah. 
you're and then you're you're both going to succeed you can you could decide how this year is going to go together with your new accountant that you pick and then be ready for next spring these are things that I we talk it. about in career path a mm-hmm. lot it's true it's very true. You know, it was so funny. I, I had a guy the other day call up. It was like a week or two ago and uh, asking, you know, some good questions right before he's just about to pull the trigger and join Land Academy. And one of his things was, I want to talk about taxes and this and that and all this stuff about taxes. I said, well, hold on a moment. First of all, if you're thinking about taxes or, or when we really get worried about taxes, it's because we're making a lot of money. Yeah. So I was like, hey, congratulations. I like the way you think. You're already th- planning on making some money and worrying about taxes, you know? And it was it was really good. And thank you for sharing that today. That was it would, that we all need to be planning and be a step ahead. And I think that's one of the great things that we can do here on the podcast is remind you of things and be ready for things and make it easy for you. Yep. Thank you. Happy to join us today. Five days a week. You can find us here on the Land Academy show. Tomorrow's Joe Friday. And we're going to talk about after 30 days, we're getting land deals done from the road. So we've got 30 days under our belt and we're going to ask Joe about what's it like to oh, actually good. run our land business, you know, from the road. Cool. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. One of the things about running your business from the road is you forget things. <laughs> hey, you know what's so cute? I got to tell you something funny. Right now behind us, I just had a flashback of Strand. Yeah. If you've been listening and watching us for years, I know many of you have, you remember when we lived on the beach and what was going on behind us, there was all these people going by and bicycles going by and the water behind us, right? And we lived there. Well, I have a different view. You, I have lake water behind me, but I just watched some bikes go by. I'm like, oh, it just gave me like a little bit of a, I got a little bit of a uh, California strand hug. That, that just made me feel so great. Hey, thanks for tuning in. And Jack said a few minutes ago when we started the show, and I'm going to remind you right now, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and comment on those uh, shows that you love. And don't forget to, if you're a member of Land Academy, jump in Discord. That's where all the great communication uh, is happening. So much is going on there. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 